Alright, so in this lab we're going to be doing the final lab, or lab 13. And in this one, what we're going to do is have two processors that talk to each other. So now the first thing that we need to do is decide how we want to talk to them. We can either do it with wireless, or we can do it through a wired connection. So there's both pros and cons to this. So wireless, we'll put over here. and then we have our wired connections over here. Alright, so the pros for wireless, you don't need infra infrastructure between the connection points and that's pretty much it. Now some cons you are distance limited by power because air absorbs some of it You probably need line of sight, depending on your frequency. And those are the major ones that we're going to be worrying about. So now the pros for wire. You don't have the line of sight restriction. You have longer distance. And then back over here, I forgot this one. It has a tendency to drop packets, so it's unreliable. And the wired one is more reliable. It still has a tendency to drop packets and flip bits, but it's more reliable just because it's a guided media. Now, some cons you have to have for infrastructure. Now, because of this lab, we're dealing with a very short range. We don't actually need that much infrastructure. We just need a couple wires. So what we are going to do is we're going to implement what is known as a four-wire or four, yeah, four-wire SPI mode. And our wires are going to be, we need a chip select or CS, which is chip select, as I just said. We need a clock, we need a data in, and a data out. Alright, so that's taken care of. So now we have to define our little protocol with this. So we'll have our two little chips sitting here communicating through four wires. And now, how does one bit, one has to be the slave, so we'll call this one the master, and this one the slave. Now, why does it have to be a master, and one, why does it have to be a slave? Well, it's synchronous cycling, so the clock determines when data gets sent and received. So you have to have one determine the clock, and that's the one that we'll call the master. So the master controls the clock. and chip select. So now why do we actually need this chip select? We only have two chips. Well, you can actually have more than one chip in SPI mode. So that's just why we're going to have it. We're going to make it more of a general case than a specific case. So now for us, we will put our lines here. Okay, so now the way that I'm going to describe this mode is that before, when you're not sending anything, the CS or chip select will be high. When you want to communicate with your slave chip, the master will set the chip select down to low. And when you're done communicating, it will set it back up to high. Now your clocking signal, we will say only occurs after the chip select goes low and we will make it have a, ran a period, a stable period the whole time. I know this doesn't look stable but pretend it is. And 
and it'll just keep going like this the whole way through and once it reaches the end it'll stop and it'll stay low after that point and it'll stay low to begin with anyways so then let's change to a little different color now the data in is the data from master so we'll say fm and data out is two masters so tm alright so the data outline or data inline as we'll say from the master we will place it on the line starting at the first rising edge of the clock and this little symbol just means that we don't know, really care what state and then it will be clocked in on the rising edge or on the falling edge, sorry so it'll come in it'll be clocked in on the rising edge or it'll be placed on the line at the rising edge clocked into the slave on the falling edge so then we'll end will stay there until the next cycle where it'll, where it'll change to whatever the next state is and we'll just keep doing this and what this guarantees is that the data is always there on the clock cycle and it's always stable to and just pretend that again my drawings are wonderful even though they're really not and then of course just as normal after the data after the chip select line goes low we'll clear all the data off so now these little weird eye symbols those are going to be just arbitrary data now from the data side what we're going to do is we are actually going to take and we are going to waste an entire cycle waste the first rising edge and on the first falling edge we will place our data on the line why is this? because really your data out doesn't really know when the first clock cycle is coming only the master does so we're going to make him waste the first one and on the falling edge he will have it placed and then on the rising edge he will clock the your other side will clock it in the master and this is going to occur the whole time and of course just like normal after the chip select line goes low all the lines will be set down to zero. This just guarantees that we're all completely done. And now the width of the cycle will transmit eight bits at a time. So the transmission protocol will say or style. We'll call it style for now just for the heck of it so we're going to transmit 8 bits at a time and the most significant byte or the MSB goes first so now what does this look like? well 8 bits is 1 byte so let's say we have the number 1000000001 that's 8 bits and then what does the MSB mean? well it happens to be this one in front that is the MSB so now this is a pretty bad example because it's symmetrical both ways so let's choose a different one 1 on the front 0 0 1 1 0 1 0 there that's not symmetrical so what are we going to do? well in the first rise we're going to place out a 1 in the second rise a 0 and the third rise is 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0. Now, why do we define it this way? Well, because there's two modes of transfer. There's big Indian and little Indian. And the way most networks in the world work today is by big Indian.
just because it's easier for humans to read. And that's what we're going to stick with. That's the only reason. So then how do we convert our data from a byte into bits and then send it out one and get at a time or one bit at a time starting with the biggest bit? Well we mask it. So if we have the again the same one this line and we want to send out the very first bit, we will do a logical and with one and then we remove this which results in the data if we did it on the second one this results in all zeros alright so anyways let's disc discard that looking back here we've masked off our byte or our bit now we want to send it out on a random port. We'll say port C, bit 2. As we can see, it's in bit 7 position. So what we're going to do is move this down. Um, so we have 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, and we want to place it right here. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to move 1, 2, 3, 4, five slots over, and then, set, okay, so, we'll call this number A. So we'll say A is equal to A shifted this way, or right, this is all C code, by five units, one, two, three, four, five, correct. And then we'll also say port C is equal to A. And there we go, that puts it right on out. And now for this lab, we are actually doing this on the PIC 16F 877A. So if you don't know how to set up the clock, just see some of my previous videos. And if you have any questions, just leave some feedback.